Hey mate, this is Adam and today I'm gonna to show you the best ways to foam roll your upper back, AKA your thoracic spine. Let's check it out. So today we're going through how to roll out your thoracic spine the best way, but also how the, some, um, basically some big mistakes that people make while they're doing it. And then also just go through when the best time to do it and um, how often you should be doing. So it's much like what I did on my quad rolling video. If you haven't, um, if we can put something up here. Yep, Ooh, there we go, cool. Um, check it out. Okay, so first things first, we need to get the setup right. So for this, we're just focusing on the upper back, which is your thoracic spine kind of starts um, just below your shoulder blades and then goes up to the base of the neck. That's what we're gonna hammer today. So um, just place the foam roller down here. Down here. So a lot of us will just tend to foam roll up and down here, not knowing what we're doing. But we, if we're just doing it this way, we're not getting stuck into those muscles that are hidden behind our shoulder blades. So there's two ways we can go about this is, we can give ourselves a big hug like that to pull our shoulder blades away from each other. But if you find you get a bit of a sore neck, like most people doing this, you can actually grip behind your back like that and pull your elbows forward, okay? So that should bring your shoulder blades um, basically in front of you, like the same thing we're doing here, but your elbows are just getting pulled in front there. So whatever is most useful for you. So once you've got this position, is you can start to roll up and down. Now if we just rolled up and down, probably wouldn't get too much done. This is just to find out where your sore spots are and just what's going on in your body. So we're going up and down. Um, so what we'll do is we might find that oh, I roll up and down and then I've got, hey, you know, one side is a little bit sore than the other. What we can do there is we can tilt a little bit onto one side and then just go up and down. That way we can use our weight to just hammer one side of our erectors or we can go on the other side and just go up and down. Okay, once we've found that real sore spot, we can park our butt on the floor a little bit and we can just kind of push our body left to right. So we're not rolling left and right just yet. We're just going pushing left and right. So we're kind of rubbing our skin uh, left and right against the front wall. So just further desensitizing that area and then getting ready for a few other things that we're going to do. So we go left and right a few times, another technique. So once we've done that, we, then we can start to uh, twist a little bit. Okay, so going against the grain of the muscle. So. Uh, so the way we do that is we rotate into the floor, going left to right like that. And we're going to get a bit more of a broader range here. Okay, and we're able to put more pressure on each side of the erector. Once we've done that one, we can really pin down one side and really try to open up that thoracic spine and get a bit more of a stretch. So again, we're still holding here, or you can go like that, holding here, Take a deep breath in, and then breath out. And really try to flare that rib cage up to the sky, opening that thoracic spine. So we just wanna make sure while we're doing this one is that our butt's parked on the floor, so we're not cheating while we're doing it. Park the butt on the floor, and just really open up and look to the sky, and on your breath out. So go for about a couple reps, anywhere from five to 10 reps on each of these um, to get the most out of it. The other way that you can do it with, um, without your arms is actually you throw your arms overhead to add a bit of, um, basically use the weight of your arms and it just allows you to stretch a bit more. So you park your butt on the floor and you go your hands here, so breath in and then deep breath out. And then just let your arm flop overhead. So you might end up about here, but just do a few reps and you should be able to get a bit more range each time. Just make sure while you're doing this sort of foam rolling that you're keeping your body in um, good positions just so that you don't get a sore back or a sore neck or sore shoulders while you're doing that. So that means not um, holding onto your shoulders and then shrugging all the way up or gripping in and then shrugging up to your ears and giving yourself sore traps or another problem that you don't need. Um, so just make sure your shoulders are down. Um, make sure to squeeze, you can squeeze your butt a bit by pushing your knees out, just so you don't over arch in your lower back. We're mainly just focusing on the upper back here. So on the stretches when you go down here, just make sure your butt's firmly in the floor. And when you're opening up, that you're not 
arching your lower back too much. Try to lock that down, tuck your bum under, and just focus on getting that extra range in your upper back. That way, if you're following these rules, you'll be able to foam roll for longer and get more out of your foam rolling with your upper back. So I'd recommend just rolling out your upper back and T-spine uh, just for about five to 10 minutes. Um, no more than that before you work out because that's just gonna be eating time into uh, your workouts. Uh, I particularly recommend doing it before any kind of shoulder or chest workout as a lot of people find it really hard um, to get that nice um, thoracic extension or you know to get a straight back while they're doing bench press and shoulder press. If you're finding that you've got quite jammed up shoulders, this is another great way to help, um, help loosen up those shoulders by hitting the thoracic spine. Just make sure you're not spending any more time than 10 minutes. If you're spending way too much time there, either you're doing it very inefficiently or maybe you've got a big issue than you really think. Maybe you should get yourself checked out. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Um, please make sure to subscribe down below or give me a thumbs up if you wanna see more videos just like this. Um, make sure to download my seven lifts to bulletproof your body after injury, if you've got a current or past injury that just keeps on creeping back every time you go back in the gym doing deadlifts, squats, push-ups, or anything, this is the guide for you. Um, just uh, pop that down in the description down below. Make sure to give it a download. I hope you enjoy it. My name's Adam, and I help people return to the gym and stay there.